Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with RaggedyEdge.net. Uh, today I'm going to do, it's actually my second time, I'm going to pull these wheels off and replace the disc rotors. Now when we get further into the video, I'll explain why, why this is my second time. Um, so the process is going to be roughly, first I'm going to loosen up the lug nuts on these wheels, just loosen them, enough to where I can get them off once I've lifted the coach off the ground. Then I'm going to go under there and uh, I've already got it raised up a little bit on the hydraulic levelers. Then I'll use a bottle, a 12 ton bottle jack to raise it up a little bit more and put a 22 ton jack stand under it. A very heavy duty jack stand. Actually way overkill uh, for this coach but I like overkill and it does have a big base plate underneath of it and since I'm on gravel I want a big big base plate to support it. So, um, just to give you an overview of how I've so a quick overview of the a quick overview of the equipment I have set up here. We've got the um, there's my big jack stand, a 12-ton bottle jack. I've got a, a tote here to capture uh, the oil out of the hubs. And then I have another old kitty litter box and I use to hold parts. This is my uh, lug nut winch is what I call it. There's the new rotor. And then other parts are set up here including uh, paper towels, rubber gloves, eyewear, uh, sealant, and uh, Loctite. Heavy, high temperature Loctite. So next step is to loosen the lug nuts. Okay, to loosen these lug nuts I'm going to start off with my AC Delco air impact wrench, which I think goes up to about 370, 500, uh, 400 uh, uh, foot pounds, which is probably not going to touch these, but let's try it and see. I did, when I've tied this apart before, I did put uh, an anti seize, a little tiny dab of anti seize grease on these, so the thread should be at least uh, a smooth moving. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, as I expected, this isn't going to budge them. These are torqued to about uh, 475 to 500 foot pounds. And you've got to figure that given they're torqued to that, it's probably going to take a little bit more than that to, to break them loose. Which is why I have this very sweet little device here. This is a, a winch or torque leveler this thing is able to do what the air impact wrench is not it's This thing is a 58 to 1 ratio, so if I put, say, 20 pounds of pressure on this crank, we're talking close to a thousand, around a thousand foot-pounds of torque on the lug nuts. All right, so we got the, the lug nuts slightly loosened, so now I'm going to use my 12-ton bottle jack. First, I'm going to thread out the, this piston piece so I don't have to jack as much. There we go. Okay. I think I can lift on that.
leaf spring bracket thing. I can shoot right up in the middle of that. I think that'll help supposedly retain it a bit. Notice I got a, a hat on. It's a, kind of a, like a welder's hat with insulite padding in it, which is kind of like a helmet. So when I'm under here, and I don't be busting my head against stuff. That really sucks. I've got the hydraulic levelers. I've already raised the coach up a little bit. I think I got her lifted up enough. I may have to dig out some gravel underneath the wheels here when I go to put them back on. Hopefully this is enough to get them off. And presumably are loose enough that my air and pack wrench will take them off as well. Make sure it's off. I used a little bit of anti-seize on these so that it keeps the threads nice and good. Also, between this washer and the nut, uh, I've lubed those before as well. on this now would be a good time to put a tire pressure monitoring system where you have easy access to the valves. Okay now I've got to remove this disc brake caliper. That's my next step. And I've got to come up with a way to hang it so it's uh, secure. First I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, this one nut off the top here. i got to break loose. I'm going to do it with my air impact wrench. Get you a peek in there what it looks like. See this nut right here, right here, and it has this weird thing right here that it threads into. Otherwise, it's floating. The bottom one, 
I can leave in place it will just slide out so this is the only one actually holding the caliper in place so I just got to break that free and then we're good to go okay so because the leaf springs are in the way I can't use the air impact wrench so I get to pound it off with a hammer and an 18 millimeter wrench Fortunately, it's coming off a lot easier than the first time. Even though I did put on high temperature Loctite. Okay, we got that caliper is ready to come off. Now I just got to come up with a way to use a bungee to hold it in place. Maybe I can hang, sling it over this leaf spring there. It's just the caliper just rotates down on that bottom pivot. And then slides out. Okay, so I've got the caliper slung. Here you can check your brake pads. Now these are these are brand new. So they're fine. Set them there to put them back in later. So now the next step is to get this this whole wheel hub to come off. And that's uh, there's two steps to that. One is removing this these nuts here, and that allows us to pull the axle out. And then there's a big lock uh, nut and lock nut bearing lock nut underneath that that we'll have to pull that allow the the wheel hub to come off. So. That's up next. These are uh, 22 millimeter nuts. 7 eighths is close enough. got all the, the nuts off for this axle flange and so that's just a matter of pulling that thing out so we can get it to break loose I'm gonna capture the oil because I'm uh, I'm going to kind of measure it and then refill from here because the last time I had this apart, and I'll explain later why, uh, I already did the whole differential oil uh, gear oil change. Okay, so it's free and it should slide all the way out. We'll just set this aside right there so it's out of the way. Cardboard so we don't get it dirty. We definitely don't want to introduce any dirt into the differential. Now the hub is going to have the gear oil in it, the differential gear oil in it. And so like I said, as I pull that off, I'm going to uh, kind of capture it and measure it and then refill it when I put this back together. What we have now... Okay, so to get these, there's two nuts here that are securing the, the bearings to this hub. And so I've got this, it's a three and a quarter inch big giant socket that fits on that. There are some tabs that are kind of slightly bent to, uh, to kind of lock that, this outer nut in place. So we'll straighten them up a little bit. Don't want to straighten them too much because they're a pain to bend into place. So I want to straighten them just enough to Get that nut off. Okay, this big three and a quarter inch welded socket is not designed to be used with an air impact wrench. But guess what? I'm gonna use it with an air impact wrench. I'll hit it easy though, I'll be gentle on it. I could turn the wrench down, but all right. 
mean, it's only torqued to 55 foot pounds, so it doesn't take much really. I probably could have used a breaker bar on it and gotten it. But here we go. So here's our outer nut, the lock nut. This big nut will sit in the kitty litter box parts tray. Now to pull this locking washer out. All right, here's our, our locking washer. That tab faces inwards on the inside. Adjusting nut for the, the bearing. So I'll set that with the outside, the lock nut for that. Let's see if we can loosen this nut. I'm gonna have to get the socket on here. We'll do an illegal use of the socket again. Let's tap that a little. Okay, there's our inside bearing adjusting nut. Let's see if we can get that race to come out. These are really nice Tempkin bearings, so I always like to see that. good quality Timken bearings roller bearings now at this point if you are going to replace be replacing the inner hub seal you could put this big nut back on here and then yank this whole hub off and then pound that seal out using this nut but since I'm not replacing the seals because I've already done that before I'm not going to pull the seal out. So now I get all my stuff kind of clear out of the way. So I got to pull this big heavy beast off. All right, so now what we got to do is remove these bolts and that disc rotor will come off. And you're probably looking at the disc rotor saying, what the hell's wrong with that disc rotor? It looks perfect. Well, it's almost perfect. We'll come back to that later. My story of tale of woe. Okay, this is a one and an eighth inch socket I'm going to be using on this. I think it's probably metric, but the one and eighth inch is close enough. I'm going to see if my air impact wrench can break these free. We do have heat on standby. Woohoo! Good air impact wrench. Good job. So I've got the old rotor off and I'm ready to put the new one on. So now my little tale of woe to explain why I'm doing this task a second time and replacing what appears to be perfectly good rotors. Well, these are uh, Bendix rotors and I found them on, on rockauto.com 
and uh, I was looking through all the rotors. I was trying to pick like the best one. Some key things to remember on rotors is that the number of holes in the rotor are not related to the number of lugs, lug nuts you have. So, you know, I thought, well, hey, I'm on the ball on that, so I know what I'm looking for. I got the right number. Uh, on this case, it's a six, six bolt pattern with the hat shaped uh, rotor. And, uh, and I also knew that I had ABS brakes, so I knew I needed ABS rotors. Well, as I was looking through all the rotors, trying to find the top tier one that was ABS, because the, the, really a lot of the better ones apparently were not ABS. And I found one by Bendix. So I found the Bendix rotors, and uh, they were the first ones, the top tier ones that I saw that uh, did not mention that they were non-ABS. And so, uh, yeah. So I thought, okay, that's pretty good, and they, they were actually pretty affordable. And I thought, hey, Bendix, that might even be a U.S. company. Maybe they're U.S. made. Well, I actually went to uh, order them and then saw how much the shipping was going to cost. So I went looking elsewhere, and I found them on Amazon with my prime free shipping, <laughs> the same price. I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's a bargain. So I ordered them, uh, and I got them, and I mounted them up. Now, I did not notice... I, d I knew they needed to be ABS, but I didn't really know what that meant. Uh, turns out, the key difference for ABS is it has these, these uh, almost look like a gear in here, it's ridges that are read by the ABS sensor, apparently. So anyway, so I got these Bendix rotors in place and, uh, and got everything all mounted up. It all went together, together really nicely and bled the brakes and everything and and uh, went to go for a drive and noticed the ABS light was on. And didn't really think anything of it because I really don't care about ABS. Uh, in fact, I've kind of, it's annoyed me sometimes because come to a slow speed stop at a stoplight, sometimes it actually engages or it starts uh, doing the whole pulsating thing. And so I'm not real keen on that. But uh, the uh, uh, I thought, well, I'll just uh, disable it. So I looked online, saw they could pull the ABS fuse, and thought, yeah, that I'll just run this thing without ABS brakes, F regular old school brakes. That's what I grew up with. I thought it would be fine. So pulled the 60 amp ABS fuse, and then saw that my engine wouldn't start. I thought, well, that's pretty odd. Why won't my engine start with AB my ABS depowered? So, well, I'll just go back to the ABS unit, which is under the chassis here, about midway back on the chassis, and I uh, thought, well, I'll just unplug it back there. We'll just bypass this whole thing. And I unplugged it there, and of course, still, the engine did not start. Uh, so, then, what was another thing I'd noticed was our transmission was behaving oddly, especially when backing up. It seemed like it wasn't staying in gear. It was like slipping. And I actually checked with some and I thought it was going to take it into an Allison transmission shop and have that looked at. And then stumbled upon a site on the internet, and I'll, I'll try to remember to add a link to them, uh, but they had a, a section that talked about if your transmission's misbehaving and your ABS light is on. Now, the interesting part is that the ABS actually feeds data to the, the transmission control unit on the Allison transmission on this particular model doesn't mean it's going to do it on all models, but on the one I have, it's a 2003 workhorse chassis, W22 chassis. The uh, ABS does feed data to the transmission control unit, which it uses to basically, when it detects that, I guess, in a lockup condition, it's going to basically unlock or slip the clutch or something like that. I don't know anything about transmissions, but apparently it's slipping something or not preventing a, a complete lockup of your transmission. And so that would explain why transmission was misbehaving in reverse. So then I thought, well, hey, you know, maybe I just get the, let's find someone to reprogram the transmission control unit, because I really did not want to go in here and pull these out and swap them. So, but then, uh, and the, the guy that, had actually, on the website that actually uh, keyed me into the ABS tie into the transmission, uh, said, well, that, it certainly would be possible, but you're not going to bet to find a Allison, you know, qualified Allison dealer that's going to be willing to do that for liability reasons. And so here I am replacing a perfectly good non-ABS rotor with a, actually it's a nicer, I think, uh, 
called Centrex or something. But it's a e, e coating which has epoxy on the spots that normally rust. And of course, uh, so that's what's going on in place, and that's why my seals presumably should still be good. The next step would be to actually clean this rotor up. And I could use brake cleaner uh, just for environmental sake or whatever. I'm going to use just a 100% simple green and just wipe the rotor surfaces off, degrease them. So you got that greasy coating on them to help protect them, make them look nice and shiny when they ride. other side. All right, so the rotors now are pretty thoroughly degreased. So now I just gotta bolt this thing in place. And we're gonna apply And as I bolt this uh, disc on here, we're gonna apply some high temperature red thread locker on it. Um, and uh, so that should help because you definitely don't want these coming loose because you, you don't even have access to them really if they were to come loose and you wouldn't know it and it'd just be a mess if it came apart so uh, high temperature because of the heat generated from the braking system and red so they're pretty locked in they're pretty good uh, just use a small dab of it and on each bolt and then hammer them home with the air impact wrench Okay, these uh, bolts that hold the disc rotor on, I'm going to clean them up with the wire brush. Get the old thread locker off. Just get those threads nice and clean. And then uh, put a dab on there and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we got a bit of thread locker. Maybe a little much. But get some thread locker on each of these disc rotor bolts, thread it in there, run them in with the air impact wrench. I don't actually remember what the recommended torque is for these, but I do remember the last time I basically was right at what my air impact wrench could do, so I just uh, ran them home with it. So now we're tightening. Get them up first, just a little, and then we'll go through and cinch them down. Okay, wait for the air compressor to recharge and then I'll hit them again and then we'll mount this hub back up. All right, we got the uh, brake rotor back on the hub. It's Loctited. Uh, just wanted to mention that if you are replacing the seals and you need to drive them in, which they, they are kind of hard to drive in, is I use this as my seal driver. It's a, I think it is, it's four inch sewer and it's uh, some kind of adapter. I think maybe it's inside to outside maybe adapter. I'm not sure, but that's what I used because it fit and was just the right size to drive that seal in place. Uh, not ideal, you might want to get a seal driver, appropriate seal driver and do it, but uh, that worked for me. It was awkward though, pounding that thing in. Um, so now we're ready to stick the Wheel hub back on. It's 
what I want to do is try to I'm going to try to lift this up in there and slide it up on the axle without um, without letting the seal get itself hurt. I'm going to take a little bit of my oil that fell out, spilled out, and put it around the seal's edges just to help lubricate them as I put it on. Although I think they're pretty well lubricated, but all right. Here we go. This big old heavy thing. Now the next step is to clean the... Well, maybe not quite the next step. We'll get this gasket material cleaned off here. We'll do that after we get the uh, bearings in place. Nice Timken bearing up in there. Get shoved up against this race. snugged up. And I'm going to try to rotate the hub while I tighten it down. Make sure I get the bearing races seated. So I'm going to tighten it down fairly tight. We're starting to feel some resistance. Now we've got a little bit of resistance in there, so a little bit too tight. So I'm going to back it off a bit, and then we'll use the... That was just to seat the bearings. Now I use my... Uh, torque wrench, set it on 55, right there. Okay, with the, the bearing nut torqued down to 55 foot-pounds, and I'll put this uh, lock washer, which has the groove that fits on the axle. These tabs go in and engage the, the bolt, the nut. And looks like I need to maybe, I'm gonna have to either tighten it a little more or loosen it a little more because it's not lining up with that washer. So let's, 
we need to find is the point where it a peak comes right up there at the top. Maybe I've got it too tight. Right. Back it off just a little bit. All right. So now it is engaged. The tab on the axle is. Got the peak of that that uh, bearing nut, and now we secure the outer lock nut. Outer lock nut will set it 55 foot pounds. And then we've got to bend this little tab back over, over the nut to make sure it doesn't come undone. Um, The um, if I should put a little bit of high temperature lock 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 thread lock around that because I could I couldn't find anywhere I could get replacement of this locking tab so let's see if we can bend it back it's really hard to bend. Unlike most uh, locking tabs, it's really actually thick, thick metal. It doesn't uh, cooperate terribly very much there. It doesn't really have to be bent completely flush against the thing. It's just enough to keep it from unspinning. thread lock around that. I might need to disassemble it again when I figure out what else I got wrong. So that should be good. So next is to clean up this barrier, this mating surface for the axle to remount the axle. So I've got to clean off the old sealant. The original gasket was like this little thin plastic almost saran wrap looking stuff. And so instead of using that I'm using um, so instead of using the little saran wrap looking gasket. I'm going to use this uh, gear oil gasket maker to by per Permatex. And so what I got to do now is just kind of clean that up, make sure there's no, no old gasket left on there, also on the axle, and then I'll clean it off with uh, some brake cleaner to make sure the surface is clean. And then we'll apply some of this and reinstall the axle. Okay, I clean the surfaces with Simple Green and then followed up with some uh, brake cleaner. Got them all nice and clean on both the hub as well as on the, the axle mating surfaces. And then applied the uh, Permatex gear oil gasket maker. 
and then spread it around a little bit with my finger. It doesn't need a big thick gasket in there. Remember it had only this little tiny cellophane looking thing. So this is gonna be really overkill compared to that. My guess is that with these mating surfaces are so well machined they could probably just do it without a gasket. But let's just make sure because we sure don't want this to leak. All right, so now it's time to insert the axle. This can be a little bit tricky just trying to get these these gears to engage with the, these teeth to engage with the differential output. And it's just a matter of just kind of rotating, kind of balancing it up and down. There. Okay, we've engaged the differential. Now, just got to slide it all on. We can rotate the hub a bit to get it into place. And there we go. Now I'm going to put these nuts on. I'm going to tighten them just a little bit, but not completely. You've got to let the gasket sealer cure a bit for about an hour before we actually 100% torque them down. Actually, I could even put the wheels back on, get the brakes back in place. And before we do that, the tricky part is just make sure you don't forget to torque these down. That would that would kind of suck to have your axle pop out while you're driving down the road. Just enough to where it just starts kind of squeezing a little bit of that gasket out. Thin it up a bit. Tried to wipe on the inside of the hub so that it didn't squish any inside, but inevitably there's probably going to be some get squished in there. I presume it's all engine degradable. using the wrench instead of the air impact wrench so that I don't cinch it, suck it up too tight and blow all my gasket out. So do this bit by hand. That nut stud there probably could use a little more anti-seize, a bit better resistance threading it up. I didn't add any antices. I did use some antices the last antices uh, grease the last time. Still protect the threads and lubricate them a bit. There's still enough on there. Now we'll let that cure. Now we'll switch back to the, the brake system. We can observe reinstalling the brake. What we have on the bottom here is a, a stud that's, uh, I've greased before, so I believe it should be fine. So now I'm gonna take the pressure off of this bungee, which has been holding this in place. This caliper's pretty heavy. I want it to hang on those brake lines. So now we'll put the brake pads back in place, pad in towards the rotor. Don't stall them backwards in it can be done.
rotate that back up. And now we got our, our mounting nut there to put in place, which is this puppy right here. Clean the threads off a bit. I'm gonna put just a itty bitty tiny dab, hopefully, of a thread locker on them. Just a, just a smidgen. I want to better get this off without having to apply heat to it, but I don't want it to come out. Okay, so we got just a tiny bit of thread locker on there. And we'll thread that puppy up. Works. this is the one I can't get the air impact wrench on, so I gotta do it with the hand wrench. It's an 18 millimeter wrench. my torque wrench to cinch it down. Okay, now it's time to mount those monster wheels back up on the hub. And then later, we'll come back and torque these down. Okay, with the wheels back on, snug these up as much as I can with the air wrench. Which is about 375 foot-pounds of torque. And now I use my Look, no winch. Sits at the 58 to 1. Set this at about, uh, say 15 pounds. I'm going to set it to 20 because I figure there's some friction in the system. I'm not going to reach torque all at once. I'm going to cross pattern. So it's about halfway there. And then we'll do final torquing. Wheels are mounted back up and uh, lug nuts are torqued down. I like to then run without the uh, wheel covers, without the chrome wheel covers, uh, for at least a while so that I can see and keep track and make sure that uh, nothing's coming loose at the the axle bolts aren't coming loose or the lug nuts aren't coming loose. So it's something you can keep an eye on easier if you don't have those big heavy chrome covers covering everything up. If you found a, the video of any value or use, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, watch for future videos of our adventures aboard uh, RV Raggedy Edge.